takes a lot of courage, man. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about it, man. And hopefully uh, uh, it, 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 it could bring attention in the sense that, um, you know, parents, the, uh, you know, people have to watch out for who, whom they bring into their their lives with their kids and whatnot. And that's why I wanted to uh, definitely get this, this, um, this story and what have you. That's right, we're on live. We're gonna get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Hi, my name is Will Murgatroyd and I'm going to be appearing on the Third Eye Vision Show. And today I'm going to be talking to you about something quite traumatic, uh, which is the story of how I lost my sight. Now, when you think of sight loss, you think of people who are born with genetic conditions or conditions that have deteriorated over time, or maybe uh, someone's lost their sight in an accident later on. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. I have a condition known as shaken baby syndrome and it is exactly what it says on the tin. I was um, violently shaken by my evil father at seven weeks old back in 1999 and uh, to this day he is still at large uh, because he got away with it for reasons unknown. So I was born on the 29th of October 1999 into a household of police officers, my mom Claire and my father Tony. Now throughout this I will not be referring to uh, Tony as my father or my dad because, to be honest, after what he did, he's not part of our family, or at least he doesn't, well, he doesn't feel like he is. Um, so I was born perfectly normal, perfectly sighted, etc, etc, no, no other uh, health conditions or anything, and the incident in question occurred on December the 19th of that year, when I was just seven weeks old. It was a Sunday evening, and of course, I don't remember it at all, this is a this is, of course, what I was told by my mom and uh, others later on. So, mom and her friend had gone out for the evening for a few drinks um, and had left Tony in charge of me. And from what I was informed afterwards, he spent pretty much the entire evening downstairs on his exercise bike, which are not the actions of a loving father at all. And later on, he came upstairs supposedly to carry out the necessary baby care tasks uh, but instead he violently, well he took me out of my cot and violently shook me, almost killing me. And uh, his actions caused sight loss, brain damage and a fractured right tibia. The latter two injuries uh, they fixed at the hospital. So mum and her friend Dot come in and before they can even get the key in the door, there's Tony saying the baby's not well. And with that, they rush upstairs and there I am on the end of the bed emitting high pitched squeals, which yes, I know a baby does squeal quite, quite a lot, but these were unusual, these were unreal. So I'm rushed to hospital and throughout this, Tony doesn't say a word. He doesn't admit to anything. He, he just doesn't say anything at all. Probably, you know, because he's, he's guilty. That's what it is. And, uh, it eventually transpires obviously that I've been shaken and obviously I think it affected mum a lot more than me I mean I know, I know that's funny to say that you know I'm the one go, you know I, I'm the one going through the impairment I'm the one who's having to suffer with it but mum went out and left me in my cot safe and sound you know sleeping peacefully and yet you know and then she comes back home and I've been shaken almost to death I mean how unreal is that guys I mean and uh, basically for the last 21 years Tony has had absolutely no contact with me whatsoever despite telling my mum in um, communication shortly after the incident that he would do that when I became of age now the legal age for an adult here in the UK is 18 I turned 18 three years ago he did not contact me at all and in fact, it took me to reach a point of such sorrow and despair that the idea of making contact with him finally um, finally came about. Now, 
during my younger days, to me, I was just visually impaired. You know, I, I knew to an extent what had happened. I knew who was responsible, but to be honest, I was just visually impaired and that's all that mattered. But the reality, if you like, hit home a few years back. It was Easter of 2018, the Easter holidays, and I was home from, from college and I remember it quite well. And what happened was me, my mum and my stepdad, who came on the scene uh, six years ago, back in 2014, had gone to the cinema to see a film um, called Ghost Story, which was a very, very good film. And me being <laughs> absolutely obsessed with uh, true crime, horror and that, and that lot, you know, absolutely lapped it up. And it was absolutely fine. Uh, absolutely amazing film. But um, it came to the last 15, 20 minutes or so. And this part was very action packed and it actually lacked in uh, audio description. And I turned to mom and mom uh, and said, hey, you know, what's happening here? I, I don't understand it. And of course, we're in the cinema, so she can't just pause it and explain things, you know, like we can at home. So she said, I'll tell you later. And it was then that I sat there and went, do you know what? I'm angry. I am absolutely angry at what he's done. He's not seeing this right now. He is, you know, living a new life with his new wife and two sighted children. And he's not seeing the hell that he's put me through. So the anger just grew and grew from there, really. And on the way back home, um, we all had a massive shouting match about it. You know, ended up with me shouting, my mom shouting, my stepdad shouting. And it ended up with me crying um, when we got back. And it was at that point that my folks suggested, well, you know, we've done all we can. Maybe it's time now that you're of age, maybe it's time that you actually made the contact with Tony yourself and made him aware of the the impact his actions have had on you. So I was like, well, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So it took me a while to pluck up the courage to do that. Um, because to be honest, guys, this is not a, hi, dad, let's go for a coffee conversation. This is a, hi, Tony, why did you do this? I mean, what do you say after 20, after, it wasn't 20 years, was it? It was uh, 18, 19 years. What do you say after all that time to somebody who abused you? So it took me a while to pluck up the courage and I eventually did and I wrote to him, I'm writing to you to ask why you did this, why you carried out such an unthinkable act and why you've now left us, us as a family to pick up all the pieces of your mess. And two days later, I receive an email back, pretty much consisting of lies, excuses and cover-ups. I didn't do anything to you. I played over that night time and time again in my head. And uh, I swear, all I was trying to do was was try to revive you after you felt ill, which of course is complete nonsense because I wasn't ill. I was, I was sleeping peacefully. The only time I felt ill was after he shook me. So that's uh, a lie for a start. And then he literally just apportioned blame onto everyone else but himself. He would not take responsibility for his actions. Uh, he, he, he just would not do it. So me and my family read the email over time and time again, and we weren't taking any of it. So we said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we compose a very hard hitting response to him? Pretty much detailing, well, actually you did do something, Tony. It's evident you did something. You know, I can't see because of you. And this is what I can't do or struggle to do due to your actions and uh, it must have hit him quite hard because he didn't respond and he retired about three months later with a nice lump sum and from there my anger outbursts just grew and grew and grew now outburst triggers could have been any or could be anything from uh, not being able to understand something on the TV or a film due to lack of audio description uh, to something very minor like bumping into something or someone and it just got to a point where I just I just couldn't control my anger at all so for you know for instance we'd be having you know we we could be watching tv in our house and I could walk in and ask what's happening and if I wasn't getting a clear enough or a you know good enough description then it would it, you know it, it would usually result in household or household arguments uh, ending up with mum, storming out the room and going to bed, 
my stepdad just sitting there, not really saying anything, and me just sitting there crying because I feel ashamed. And I feel ashamed and annoyed and angry at the fact that he's not seeing, you know, he's not seeing any of this. Um, and in the summer of last year now, so 2019, in the summer of last year, mum was sorting through some old junk and she came across some old emails that uh, Tony had sent to her shortly after the incident. And uh, the emails included um, some phone numbers, which were his mobile number, his wife's mobile number, and the landline number. Now, this is going back probably, oh gosh, 12, 13, 14 years, if not longer. And I thought, you know what? I've emailed him, but I actually want to speak to him on the phone. I actually want to get him on the phone now in real time and tell him exactly what he's done to me. So I call his mobile and his wife's number switched off. So I end up calling his landline. Now, again, I'm thinking it's been over a decade. There's no way he's going to have the same number. There's no way I'm going to get through to him. But I did. And I was just standing there thinking, oh my gosh, what do I say to this guy now? And I end up starting with a simple Tony. And he knows exactly who I am. And it eventually transpires that the reason he knows who I am is because he's been following me on YouTube all this time. Now, yes, I have a YouTube channel, but why are you following me on YouTube? Why haven't you jumped through, you know, if you are the loving father that you um, that you said you were in, in your email, why haven't you jumped through every hoop to contact me? You know, I'm on Facebook, you could have added me on there, you could have jumped through every hoop whatsoever to even get my home address or my college address or whatever. But no, instead he follows me on YouTube. Wow. So we, um, long story short, basically, we spend the next 25 minutes, half an hour, going round and round and round in circles. Although I, you know, even though I'm on the phone to him and we're speaking in real time and no matter what I'm throwing at him verbally, he will not take responsibility at all. He keeps saying, oh, your mother couldn't be bothered to do this. Your, your mother, your mother, your mother. It's like, no, nothing to do with my mother. Just accept responsibility for what you've done. And he just wouldn't do it at all. So in the end, we just ended the conversation with, well, do you know what? There's no way I'm going to get through to you, Tony. So I never want to have any contact with you again. And there was couple of months after that phone call where my where my mental health just spiraled out of control I was I was at college at the time at a boarding college and I was just binge eating I was you know just spending money on on, on stuff that I thought would help me in the in the long term but obviously hasn't um, but I'm very happy to say that these days my mental state is a lot better um, Although I'll never get over what he did. I'll, I'll never forget the phone call or the email or anything like that. I'm absolutely 100% happy mentally now. And I know that if I do have an outburst in the future, I know what to do. I know that if I just walk out of the room and not draw attention to it, then I'll calm down. Takes a lot of courage, man. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about it, man. And hopefully uh, uh, it, it, it it, it could bring attention in the sense that, um, you know, parents, the, uh, you know, people have to watch out for who, whom they bring into their their lives with their kids and whatnot. And that's why I wanted to uh, definitely get this this um, this story and what have you. Question: um, Were there any? You don't have to uh, go into detail. Were there any legal ramifications for what he had done to you? Um, sorry, what do you mean? Any like, in terms of maybe suing him or something to that effect, or it, did anything happen? Just you just you contacted him, it didn't go well, and you just left it alone. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, we have been thinking about re well, I have had thoughts about reopening the, reopening the case, but we haven't got around to it. And to be honest, I, I, I don't know where it would get us. I mean. We'll never know, you know, he, he was found 
culpable at the civil trial but not guilty at the criminal trial and we'll, ne we'll never know why so i don't know i mean i think i've done all i can now to be honest with you. I think, you know I, i've called him i've emailed him what i mean i have got plans in a few years and it will be probably about uh, over a decade or about uh, nine ten years now um, i have got plans to contact his sons who are currently underage at the moment um i have got plans to contact them and and ask them do you know what your what your father my father in fact has done to me and he's raised you for the past 18 years you know wow did did your mom at any point see any 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 violent outbreaks or any type of uh te temper tantrums that he was like throwing <laughs> That's a, uh, you know. he, yeah, I mean, he was a very abusive man. I mean, he would throw, uh, you know, one time he threw a coffee cup at her neck. He threw a, no, plate at her neck, sorry. He threw coffee cups at the wall. There was one time, uh, there was one, the worst one actually was when he was, um, when they were traveling to the hospital to see me, um, shortly after the incident. And he decided, I think he was driving at the time. No, it wasn't, it was mom actually. And he decided to suddenly pull the handbrake on scare mum to death she got out of the car and he drove off left her on the side of the road so yeah he was a horrible man in general and do you know why she continued to uh maintain the relationship um i think like any relationship to be honest you know, any abusive relationship you just you tend to not not ignore the facts but kind of just tend to get on with it sort of you, you know you know that something isn't right but i, I don't know i mean She'd always, you know, she'd always be willing to forgive him for whatever happened. So, you know, if he stormed out one afternoon or whatever, you know, and came back, she'd always, always forgive him. But then, you know, what he did to me, that was it. That was the final straw.